Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Today I'm going to take a look at this motherboard, which is Huanan JX99 8MF. The motherboard itself looks very similar to another motherboard called Huanan JX99 8M. That motherboard I have already reviewed on my channel, and it was a pretty decent motherboard for its money. The biggest difference between these two motherboards is the chipset. The original X99-8M was using X99 or a C612 chipset. This one, which is X99-8MF, uses B85 chipset. This is a cheap desktop alternative, thus these two motherboards are two completely different boards. Before I dive into the review itself, I would like to say thank you for everyone who has made a small PayPal donation for me and everyone who was using my AliExpress affiliate links. Only because of you I was able to purchase this motherboard for this review. Good job, keep it up and I will keep doing my videos and spending this money to buy more interesting stuff from AliExpress and other different sources to produce such videos and tell you more interesting stuff about different and hopefully interesting hardware. Now, let's take a look at the motherboard specification and figure out what we have on this motherboard. Obviously, the motherboard has a socket for LGA 2011 version 3 CPUs right over here. Then we have two memory slots, which are DDR4, and uh, the memory is working in dual channel configuration. Then we have PC Express X16 slot, PC Express X4 slot, PC Express X1 slot. There is also an M.2 slot for PCI Express and VME SSD drives. If you install here a SATA SSD drive, it's not gonna work. Then we have uh, the battery, of course, and here we have a 4-pin fan connector for the CPU fan. On the other side, you will find four SATA 3 ports, one more fan connector, this one is for 3-pin fans, then we have 24-pin power connector for the motherboard power and 8-pin power connector for the CPU power. At the bottom of the motherboard you will find front audio connector, another 4-pin fan connector, then there is a COM port, a USB port, USB 3 header for the front panel, and buttons and LEDs for the front panel. This is the clear CMOS jumper, and this is the BIOS chip itself, thus if you would manage to break your motherboard, it's pretty easy to connect with an external USB flash programmer to restore your motherboard. The I.O. panel of the motherboard consists of two PS2 ports, four USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, one Ethernet port, and a simple audio output. Huanan GX99 8MF has only four phases power delivery system. Yes, I know that if you take off the radiator, this one from the power delivery system, you will see six pairs of the MOSFETs. And especially for those knowledgeable people who are gonna tell me in the comments that the motherboard has six phases just because there are six pairs of MOSFETs, I'm adding technical specification of the controller itself so you can see with your own eyes that this is up to four phases. Three phases go for the CPU and one phase is going for the memory. I will also add a link to the technical specification of the controller in the video description so you can read it all yourself. As any other Chinese X99 and X79 motherboard I have tested from China, Honan G X99 8MF also has issues with the temperature sensors on the motherboard. The CPU temperature sensors are actually displaying the correct values, but the motherboard temperature sensors are malfunctioning. The sleep mode also doesn't work. It's a bit of a weird situation, because when I was testing with the Xeon E5 2680v4, sleep mode worked and the system was waking up after the sleep mode. But after I installed or with the Xeon E5 2670HV3, the system doesn't wake up from the sleep state. I have also validated Xeon E5 2630HV3, and with this CPU sleep mode doesn't work either. Unfortunately, right now I do not have any other V4 CPUs to validate if it's related to V3 V4 CPUs, or it just happened to be that with my particular E5 2680HV4 sleep mode somehow works on this motherboard. Unlike many other cheap Chinese X99 motherboards with a desktop chipset like B85 or H81, Huanan G X99 8MF does not have external via USB 3 controller. The USB 3 ports on the back side and for the front side are connected to the B85 chipset itself. And, surprisingly, the USB 3 ports are actually working. Testing with my external Samsung T5 SSD drive, and running Crystal Disk Mark Benchmark, the system did not crash, it was hanging a little bit here and there, but the benchmark completed and it took only 6 minutes, which is kinda good. With other malfunctioning motherboards, this benchmark could cause system crash 
or could take about 20-30 minutes to complete. So, 6 minutes for the motherboard, not that bad, and the system didn't crash. Of course, the transfer speeds were slightly lower than expected, but it still works. On the other hand, PCI Express X1 slot on Honan Ju X99 8MF doesn't work correctly. I'm talking about this small PCI Express slot. If I'm installing such graphics card which has only PCI Express X1 connection, you can see it over here. It's just PCI Express X1, so you can install it in all three of these slots. So if I install it into the first one, which is PCI Express X1, Nvidia drivers are refusing to work with this graphics card and the display output is not outputting any signal. If I install the same graphics card into this PCI Express X4 slot, Nvidia drivers are detecting both of the graphics card and the system is working with two monitors. Thus, it's a problem with the motherboard itself, how the PCI Express X1 slot is connected to the chipset and then to the CPU and not with the graphics card. Maybe there are some BIOS settings which I was not able to figure out, which would make the PCI Express X1 slot work with this graphics card, but for now it simply doesn't work. Speaking of the PCI Express X4 slot, which is working with the PCI Express X1 graphics card, this slot is connected to the CPU itself, thus it's PCI Express 3.0. Unfortunately, this slot is not functioning if you're using CPUs with a limited number of PCI Express lanes. For example, i7-5820K or i7-6800K. Those CPUs have only 28 PCI Express lanes, and this port, which is connected to the CPU, is connected to those lanes which are not connected or not existing on the CPU itself. To be able to use this PCI Express X4 slot, you need to use Xeon CPUs or i7s with 40 PCI Express lanes. On the other hand, it's also a plus, because on some other motherboards, which have ROM PCI Express connection when using uh, CPUs with a limited number of PCI Express lanes, the main PCI Express X16 slot is either disabled completely or partially. On Huanan G X99 8MF motherboard, everything except this slot is working properly fine with i7-5820K. Most of you probably know that it's possible to overclock i7 CPUs and there are certain Xeon E5, for example E5-1650 and 1660v3, which can be overclocked. Still, using Huanan Joy X99 8MF motherboard, you're not able to overclock anything. The motherboard uses cheap B85 desktop chipset, which does not have any overclocking capabilities. With this motherboard, your CPU and your memory will be working according to the Intel specification. No overclocking is possible. I have received many different questions and requests to add support of Huanan JX99 8MF to my Mi 899 application. For some reason, many of you also believe that it's not possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock hack on this motherboard because it's using B85 chipset. Previously, I have already tested Jinsha X99 MH2, which also uses B85 chipset, and I have demonstrated that it's possible to implement Turbo Boost Unlock even if the motherboard uses B85 chipset. Still, many of you for some reason believe that it's not possible to do it on this motherboard. Now I can tell you for sure that Huanan Joy X99 8MF works with Turbo Boost Unlock and I have added support to Mi 899 application. There you will also find an additional BIOS with RAM timings configuration unlocked, so you can tune your memory timings. We have to thank Technoplaneta YouTube channel for this BIOS. So, all in all, Huanan Joy X99 8MF seems to be like a semi-decent cheap Chinese X99 motherboard for cheap gaming computers. Unfortunately, not everything that bright, and the poor power delivery system is spoiling everything. Testing with the Xeon E5 2678v3, Turbo Boost unlocked, and using ADA64 stress test, after 30 minutes, this power delivery system heated up to 90 degrees Celsius. This is not acceptable. That's why I cannot recommend the motherboard as the go-to option, because when you're buying LJ2011 version 3 motherboard, you would want to upgrade your CPU in the future. Maybe it will never happen, but it's still nice to have such an option when the prices for the Xeon CPUs go down, you can install a 12-core or 10-core or maybe even 14-16-core CPU. With this motherboard, this will not be possible. Still, if you're planning to make a super cheap gaming computer and use E5 2620v3 or E5 2630lv3, then this motherboard might be right for you. Speaking of the E5 2620 and E5 2630LV3, I'm working on a video where these two CPUs will be compared one to another one, 
And I'm also adding one extra CPU for Intel LJ2011 X79 platform. So if you're interested, stay tuned and you will see how those three CPUs perform in games when paired with such a powerful graphics card as AMD RX 6800X. For now though, that's probably all I can tell you about Honor G X99 ATEM F. If you're interested, take a look at my technical slides, which are available by the end of the video, and there I have described everything I have tested, every CPU, every memory stick, which were validated with this motherboard. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you have enjoyed it, goodbye.